consider myself sort of an anthropologist of the future. I'm looking at trends that are going to give us sort of a narrative arc into the future and that will carry us along sort of a narrative flow and tell the ongoing story of how we emerge and how we redefine ourselves by virtue of what we invent. And in that we can see ourselves and we can see what's important to us and we can see what's what endures. Most of the technology that we consider new actually is meeting very ancient kinds of human needs. It's just a question of how that happens. Facebook seems very, very new and yet really it's just given us a, a much more efficient way to gather as communities something we've always wanted to do. Prior to Facebook, I never expected to see my cousins except every couple of years, maybe, just by happenstance, and now we have a family reunion every week. And so it's, yes, that's really new, but the family reunion and the desire to do that, that's quite ancient. And I'm particularly interested these days in a number of major trends, uh, neuro and biological enhancement, we now have hats that you can wear that make you smarter. What are we going to do about that as they enter schools and they enter the workplace? Uh, big data, the semantic web, uh, extreme BYOD as I call it, bring your own device, uh, transmedia, and so on. But what I'm really interested in is the lens through which we view all of these incredibly life-changing and foundational kinds of technologies and movements and trends and to me that lens is what is known these days as digital citizenship and the short story on digital citizenship is simply every technology connects us and disconnects us and it's up to us particularly as media psychologists to be the people who can be on the vanguard of helping people understand where those connections and those disconnections are. Always gives us something, always takes something away, and we need to be able to look at it on balance.